Hello friends, welcome to the pre-course discussion session of the second BNB course in association with the Arthroscopic Society of Nepal, scheduled to be held on the 28th and 29th of July 2017. Thank you for participating and it's good to have you with us and to be sharing knowledge and growing together. My topic for discussion is advantages and disadvantages of various tests for ACL injuries and my moderators are Dr. Arjun Lami Chane and Dr. Amit Joshi and I am Dr. Rajiv Raj Manandar. There are several tests described to detect ACL tear. The purpose of this video is to stimulate discussion regarding the tests used to detect ACL injury in our daily practice such as the Lachman test, the anterior draw test and the pivot shift test. How is a Lachman test performed? The patient is kept supine, the knee is relaxed at 20 to 30 degrees of flexion, one hand is kept on the distal end of the thigh, stabilizing the thigh, and the other hand behind the proximal end of the tibia. The tibia is then translated anteriorly on the femur, and the translation and the endpoint is assessed as firm or soft. This is the technique of the Lachman test. We are assessing increased translation and a soft endpoint. It is first performed on the normal side and compared to the abnormal side. We need a relaxed patient with relaxed knees. There is proprioceptive and visual anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. The endpoint must be assessed as soft or firm. There are many advantages of the Lachman test. It is easy to perform, simple, reliable and reproducible. All characteristics to qualify as a good test. There is proprioceptive and visual anterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur. It is useful in the acute setting. And it is done in the position of 20 degrees of flexion which is less painful, the ACL is more maximally stressed and we can be assessed more accurately in this position because other tissues do not limit anterior translation of the tibia. In this position, there is decreased spasm of hamstrings and the sensitivity of the test is 85 and the specificity is 94. There are certain disadvantages. Swelling and muscle spasm has a negative influence on results, hence validity is better in the chronic setting. It is inconclusive in the acute setting in regards to partial and complete tear because of persisting hamstring spasm. False negative in some chronic ruptures as the ACL stump can scar to the PCL. It should be noted that in patients with a torn PCL, the test may result in a false positive. The reason being, in the starting position of the Lachman test, the tibia will rest further posterior than usual due to the absence of the PCL, leading to increased excursion during the test. This means PCL integrity should be assessed prior to looking at ACL in integrity occasionally. And yes, large thighs are difficult to grip with small hands. I'm sure we all have faced this problem. So, we must be aware of the backup, alternative tests. The ladies' lachman, where the patient's thigh is placed on the examiner's thigh and stabilized with one hand, and the translation is carried out with the other hand as described in the Lachman test. Always the normal side first and then the abnormal side is assessed and compared. Moreover, Mulligan et al examine the proficiency in performing the prone Lachman test, which is another alternative. 
as opposed to the classic Lackman. They showed that prone Lackman yielded 78% of positive predictive value, while the classic Lackman 28%. The prone Lackman test uses gravity to pull down the femur, which lets the examiner grip and displace the tibia with, with both his hands and also feel the translation with both his hands. Another test that we will discuss is the anterior draw test. It is performed in the supine position with the knees at 90 degrees and the hips at 45 degrees flexion. The examiner sits on the patient's feet, stabilizing them and grasps the proximal end of the tibia with both hands, aligning the thumbs with the anterior joint line. The tibia is then pulled anteriorly and relative translation is assessed and compared. If an excessive displacement occurs and a soft endpoint is felt, it is assumed there is an ACL injury. This is the technique of the anterior draw test. We are assessing increased translation and a soft endpoint. The hamstring tendons are palpated with the index fingers to ensure relaxation. If the hamstring tendons are taut, then they hold back the anterior translation of the tibia. And the tibial displacement is always compared with the opposite side. And if the translation is increased and there's a soft endpoint, that is indicative of an ACL tear. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of an anterior draw test? Definitely, it is widely used, but it is used as a supportive test. Disadvantage cannot be used in the acute setting. You have to achieve a flexion of 90 degrees, which is difficult to achieve in the acute setting. And quoting Smiley from Tog's initial paper on ACL tests, he said it was masked by pain, muscle spasm and hemarthrosis. And there is a protective spasm from the hamstrings. Now, I would like to bring your notice to the door stopper effect at 90 degrees produced by the medial meniscus. The medial meniscus abuts against the acutely convex surface of the medial femoral condyle and prevents anterior translation of the tibia. Disruption of the MCL or posterior peripheral separation of the medial meniscus is necessary to permit a positive test when the ACL is torn. This may be one of the weaknesses of the test. Now coming to the pivot shift. This has been discussed in great detail in the last session. Now this is a test which determines functional knee instability. There are two main components of the test, translation and rotation. And it is helpful to assess the combined tibia, femoral, internal rotation and anterior translation. Now I would like to bring us to speak a little about the mechanism. Now with valgus torque, when the knee is flexed from full extension, the tibia experiences an anterior force due to the inclination of the lateral tibial plateau. This is very important. The ACL when intact resists this force. Now, when the ACL is torn, when in an ACL deficient knee, the lateral tibial plateau subluxates anteriorly and the tibia rotates internally about the, about the tight MCL, that is the pivot. With further flexion, the tension in the ITB acting with the geometry of the lateral tibial plateau relocates the tibia. There are certain false negatives and positives. The false negatives obtained are obtained in patients with iliotibial band pathology, MCL injury, bucket handle, medial, bucket handle meniscus tear, or a flexion contracture. False positives may be present in patients with increased laxity. So do assess both knees to say your pivot shift is positive. The advantages of a pivot shift test are it is a good predictor for the need of surgery. 
It assesses residual rotational instability after ACL reconstruction and the ability to obliterate the pivoting appears to be more important than normalizing AP laxity to prevent long-term osteoarthritis. Now, what are the disadvantages of the pivot shift test? There is a controversy in literature and it surrounds various techniques used by clinicians when performing the test. So when performing the test, you must use a standard technique. It is difficult to assess outcome when they associated injuries and limited ROM in knees with injured meniscus. The specificity of the pivot shift test has been shown to be dependent on whether or not the patient is anesthetized. It ranges from 32% without to 85% with anesthesia. Now, this paper published by Kim, reliability of the anterior draw test, the pivot shift test and the Lackman test says the tests were performed under general anesthesia or spinal anesthesia and the results of the anterior draw test were positive in 79.6% of patients in 98.6% having the Lackman test and in 89.8% .8 of patients having the pivot shift test. This was a test published by Otrovsky uh, and he assessed the accuracy of the three diagnostic tests and the conclusion was based on the predictive value statistics. Positive result for pivot shift test is the best for ruling in ACL rupture. Negative result to Lackman test is best for ruling out ACL rupture. Using sensitivity and specificity values, Lackman test is a better overall test at both ruling in and ruling out ACL ruptures. Anterior draw test, however, remained inconclusive for drawing strong conclusions. So I would like to conclude by saying there is no consensus in literature on a single gold standard measure. So, OPD setting, Lackman test has the highest sensitivity for diagnosing an acute complete ACL tear. Under anesthesia, Lackman test still has the highest sensitivity, but the pivot shift test is the most specific. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Hope we have a good discussion tomorrow and hope to see you at the BNB course on 28th and 29th of July. Thank you.